What interests me is questions which are scientific but uh, also philosophical. Origins of the universe, how the planets and the star form, origin of life, origin of conscious even. I was born in chalon sur saône and that's a small city in uh, Burgundy. Professor Jean-Louis Pouget, now 71, became interested in astronomy early on. My father, who had only an elementary education uh, to start with, bought many encyclopedia and one on astronomy. And so I looked very often at that one. I knew the, the name of the planets and their distance. And last year of high school, I was offered the admission in École Normale Supérieure uh, at Cachan. I did a master in theoretical physics at the University Paris Sud. One of my teachers, he developed a model with as much antimatter as matter uh, in the universe. And I said, oh, I want, I want to do that. He was given an internship to compute the ionization predicted by the model. Then he spent a few years working at the European Research Organization CERN and at the Goddard Space Flight Center in the US. I was very lucky at that time. Jean Lu obtained his PhD in France in 1973. He later joined the French National Center for Scientific Research, or CNRS. My work has been centered on what we call the cosmic background. The Hubble Space Telescope discovered the cosmic microwave background. The COBE satellite measured the spectrum of this radiation and uh, observed for the first time also its structure on relatively large scale. There have been two other satellites coming after, WMAP, still from NASA, which looked at that on smaller scales. And the third generation was a Planck that I led, which uh, did the same but with much better sensitivity. But before that, work on the detection of the cosmic infrared background. The red one is what we call far infrared radiation, which you cannot see, and which is radiated by objects which are much colder than stars. The blue part is the cosmic optical that we can see emitted by stars and the sun. Typically, as I say, radiation. The red part was in the goal of COBE. It was exciting because we knew that the data uh, to make this discovery was, was available uh, with the COBE satellite. For a long time, only the people from the COBE team could work on it. And when the data became public, we found very quickly in a few months we were able to, to publish uh, and, uh, what we think was the tentative detection. My team detected for the first time the cosmic infrared background which was uh, one of the uh, important discoveries of my career. It was surprising that there was that basically half of the light of the, all the stars in the universe have been absorbed by dust at one time or another. It takes into account the very early galaxies. It's a very much more difficult problem to separate the galactic dust. The knowledge of the galactic dust by our team gave us uh, an advantage on the people who had been trying to extract it before. In order to understand this cosmic infrared background, we were limited by the instrument at, at that time. And I got this idea with many others to say, well, it's, why don't we make a special measurement by adding the galaxies together? It worked nicely. And then I went to see Jean and said, yeah, yes, of course, go ahead. And then we published it. And it was a great achievement to see that the galaxies creating the cosmic infrared background. Jean Louis is very humble. He lets people work their own and he doesn't steal their work. We had worked tracers of the dust in the best windows in the galaxy, uh, less our clouds of interstellar medium. Something which is more an interstellar problem, the yellow part, which is at mid-infrared. And there were these uh, features which were known as the unidentified infrared uh, features. We didn't know the chemical species, nor the process. Jean Lu then led a small group to discover what turned out to be polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. At that time, there were three kinds of material known in the interstellar medium ice, small silicate uh, grain, silicate is rocks, 
and graphitic material. Graphitic material is, is, can be it's graphite, so it's in, in layers, and uh, uh, they had to be very small to be heated by single photons. So, and I went to look for spectroscopy of these things. Yes, and, uh, and we had a big surprise. And we had a very big surprise because uh, we had the idea that a small grain should be aromatics and with hydrogen, and it should be about 50 uh, carbon atoms according to the temperature they were uh, emitting. So we just look in the book and look for the biggest aromatic we find, and it was fantastic. We found line exactly where the observed line were. So it was a real a shock. Nobody understood how it, they were produced and so on. So it, it was, so, oh, there is a quite a substantial amount of the starlight which is re-radiated in that way. And, and furthermore, these very small particles are the ones which contribute to the heating the interstellar gas. And uh, shortly after, I was able to confirm many of the ideas. Francois Boulanger worked with Jean Lou for over 30 years. I still remember it was a very exciting time and Jean-Luc Puget came to visit me and we were showing him the data and he was so impressed that he fainted. <laughs> yeah, he, he fainted on the floor. We had to, <laughs> we were very worried. <laughs> when I was a PhD student, whenever he would talk to me, I was very happy if I could understand 10% of what he was telling me. He has not a, always a very organized uh, speech and all when he writes also, he, it's apparently messy because he has so many ideas, he probably doesn't want to spend too much time organizing them because he's already thinking about something else. <laughs> but he's a very good collaborator, so I think that always together with a lot of other people who help him put together what he has in mind. He was so enthusiastic and so uh, full of ideas that some people were kind of lost and I must admit that I was a bit lost in the beginning. He was also insisting very much on the uh, interplay between observing, modeling, that is building theories and constructing instruments has really been for me the main uh, lesson that I've taken from jean louis He's a really bad teacher. His class was not very you know, nicely ordered, but we could definitely feel that he was a great scientific leader in a human way. In 1978, jean louis became deputy director of the Astrophysics Institute of Paris. Unlike many people who, who take big responsibilities tend to drive away from uh, the day-to-day -day work, but he, actually he's uh, the most happy even today when he can actually be, be involved in the work. It's really incredible to find, find a person so enthusiastic on, 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 his, on his job still at his age. Usually when you get close to the retirement, you start doing uh, politics, uh, and instead he's still uh, really enthusiastic about uh, everything, and every new findings, every new paper, everything uh, new is coming out. Coming up after the break, the Planck Project to uncover the evolution of the universe from the Big Bang to the very recent galaxies and clusters of galaxies. So the impact is really huge. It gives a, a framework for all the rest of the cosmological uh, observations. An adoring family. Very proud of and uh, the dedication he shows. I'm just a bit sad I don't fully understand <laughs> the, the, the complex things he discovered. In the 1990s, Jean-Louis Puget led the creation of the Astrophysics Space Institute in Orsay, France. As director, he proposed building a satellite, spearheading the Planck mission. When we conceived Planck, it was to observe the cosmic microwave background, to observe the fluctuation. But of course, we wanted to remove the galactic part, so at the highest frequency, the dust, and at the lower frequencies, the cosmic ray electrons in the magnetic field of the galaxy. The project was accepted by the European Space Agency. Planck was thought to try and address 
question detect traces of a very, very, very early field, uh, which is called inflation, which basically gave birth to the universe. And in doing so, by building an instrument which is able to uh, detect radiation in different colors. This is a model of the Planck satellite, one-fourth size. And so we can see here the telescope, the mirrors, so the, the microwave radiation bounce on this mirror, on this mirror, and goes to the HFI instrument here. This is the art of the uh, high frequency instrument. In fact, the bolometers uh, are here, and they are cooled at the tenth of a degree above absolute zero. That's what gives this extremely good sensitivity. And these two pieces are inside that, which was the, the HFI instrument itself, the radiation coming from the telescope are fed into the detection system through these cones. Three, two, one. In May 2009, the Planck satellite was launched on an Ariane 5. We put this satellite at a point which is 1.5 million kilometers, three times the moon orbit, on the line which goes from the sun to the earth and outside. All this part was shielded from the sun by the solar panel. So everything, earth, moon, and sun was in the back here. And so that's what made the possibility of cooling everything to such low temperature. This is the clean room where various models of instruments were tested. What led us to propose Planck was uh, the fact that uh, a system to cool the detector at very low temperature, in zero gravity, was invented by a laboratory of low temperature physics. When I came to the IES team he was heading, I to him telling, OK, I think it's possible to make a new kind of instrument that will be about a thousand times more sensitive than the COBE satellite. It took one week to reflect for him and it told, OK, one week for such a decision that was the 25 years of our scientific activities. He's a very intent scientist. Uh, and uh, he essentially never let, let it go. <laughs> Which I think is probably what it takes to go through a project over such a long duration. The first concept of the instrument came in uh, 1993 and we were able to test the different models in the years 2000, 2005, 2007. The flight model was tested for only three and a half months, working 24 hours a day. We have to test the response of the receivers to the photon flux traveling for 13 billion years. Just when the universe was at its first beginning, only old uh, 300,000 years. This is the final product of Planck. The map, after removing the low and high frequency foreground, is a map of the anisotropies. Planck uh, allows to, to, to constrain cosmological parameters with uh, basically percent accuracy that before was not, was not possible. It's much, much easier to explain. It helps also all the theory of the star formation. Now we know that we have 70% of the energy in the universe, thanks to Planck, that is called dark energy. It explains that the universe is accelerating. So it's become bigger and bigger. That uh, breaks through uh, uh, progress in, uh, in cosmology because it gives a, a framework for all the rest of the cosmological uh, observations done with a big telescope on the ground or in space. Planck, our CMB so far, is the only probe we have had for humans that is capable of constraining together all the basic elements that determine the evolution of the universe. It's probably a thousand people from academic laboratories and universities which were contributing to Planck. And then there was industry building the satellite total cost of the Planck mission is half a billion euros. It's among the expensive in space instruments. What is great with the work from Rui, he works with a lot of people in such a way that he knows 
with who he has to interact to get uh, to, to solve problems. We had 50 detectors in HFI, which was very small. And now uh, there are experiments on the ground which have several tens of thousands of detectors. And I guess uh, in 10 years there would be probably hundreds of thousands of detectors. A new international mission is proposed for 2028. Measuring the polarization and measuring spectral distortions of the cosmic radiation based on a completely different instrumental setup. The search for life somewhere else is a big topic for future astronomy to test if there is sign of biological type of chemistry which would basically sign the presence of life. He's driven by the quest to understand the universe. He's really a kind of person that is really simple. We love to travel abroad, hiking and sailing. With my parents and when we were at high school with my brother, we were sailing on very small sailing boats on the river Thorn, where we lived. Then we got taught about how to sail along the coast and navigate. That's great. In 1978, Jean-Lou met Catherine from Brittany on a sailing trip. Very uh, rough and sportive because we were 10 people on a wooden boat of 10 meters long. No facilities and no motor, only sail. So it was very fantastic. When you first met him, what did you think about him? It was ugly and <laughs> not very good speaking and not very well. <laughs> there were other people, and it was maybe it was the best one. There were uh, several women, for example, on this sailing boat, but uh, obviously I was much more attracted to, to Catherine than to any of the others. We started dating, was just was after, because meeting, showing photographs. We used to travel once or twice a year in uh, foreign countries, in rural areas, with interesting people. She made very nice photographs. We lived together without being married during a long time. Until their eldest son, Jeremy, was 15 years old. The day we got married, he went, he went to high school. And <laughs> but why did you suddenly decide to marry? It was mostly practical. Catherine, an economics major, has retired after working as a journalist for the newspaper Liberation for 20 years. We love our work. I chose not to go abroad to uh, my job, to stay in Paris in order to take care of my children because jean was traveling a lot. I'm proud of what you achieved. Seeing him uh, work uh, all this time for decades, uh, every evening, every weekend, on his uh, vacation, <laughs> on a boat, lost in the Pacific, in the Caribbean, still working on his, <laughs> his papers. On holidays, for instance, I hear him a lot um, talking uh, during conference calls and struggling to explain scientific concept and not really understanding, but he always manages when we're on holidays to find times for all of us, uh, despite his jobs. Uh, there was one vacation just before they would basically pack the satellite. I was on the beach and they told me that there had been a, a, a leak of helium and that was an extremely serious problem. Each evening, <laughs> I have a recipe of the day, but the difficulty is that he supposes that I have a PhD, <laughs> but I am not a scientist, I, have, I am an economist. Very proud of the dedication, he showed a very good uh, achievement. <laughs> He's very manual, so he teached us a lot on uh, how to repair things. Yeah, it was not only spiritual uh, stuff, it was also uh, a lot of uh, how to live. We had a house in the south, south of France, and uh, basically he, uh, we had a telescope there. We looked at the stars. We knew most of the uh, constellations when we were 10. It's hard to follow the same path as you. 
<laughs> as your father. We are both engineers. I'm more in, into the, the uh, statistical um, plus uh, artificial intelligence. I'm uh, working for an uh, information system. You must be proud of that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We live this moment all together because it was all, always there, like um, Planck and the results of Planck, and so that was really you exciting. Think he's a smart guy. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> impressed. <laughs> We're very grateful to have them close by. He's a, a great father, great grandfather. He's nice, and uh, we play with him. I was preoccupied about doing, you know, family, and I wanted children very much. So I didn't feel it should be in competition with my work. I am formally retired from CNRS, but I'm in Academy des Sciences. I still have plans in my work, but the uh, pressure will, will go down, so it will be easier to take more time, especially for the children, for the grandchildren.